Hey guys, so before I get into today's video, I just want to let you guys know that I am uploading episodes for my Kingdom Hearts 3 Let's Play. I upload two 30-minute episodes every single day, so if you guys want to go check those out, that would be amazing. If you find that you are enjoying them, please subscribe and hit the bell button so you guys are up to date and notified whenever I upload the next episode. Uh, I had a lot of fun making these, and I really, really hope that you guys check them out and enjoy them just as much as I enjoyed making them. So yeah, with all that out of the way, let's get right into the video. What is going on everybody and welcome to the video. So today I figured I would sit down and I would go over every single Disney World in Kingdom Hearts 3 and I would rank it from best to worst in my own personal opinion. Now there's a lot of things that are going to be going into this list, mainly just the story of the world, the gameplay, um, basically just what made it unique, what made it stand out, and um, just overall how I felt leaving the world while I was playing the world. There's a lot of different things that you know go through your mind while you're playing through a world, especially in Kingdom Hearts. And by no means with this list do I mean that I truly, truly disliked any world. I loved every single Disney world in this game. I had a blast, but there are some worlds that I definitely favored a little bit more. And those reasons will be very clear by the end of this video. Once again, I would like to state that this is going to be a list of my personal opinion. These are worlds that I personally found more enjoyable than others, ones that I found less enjoyable than others. So yeah, if you guys want to let me know down below what your opinions are, what your favorite Disney worlds are, that would be great. Actually, if you just want to let me know what your favorite one was and what your least favorite one was, that would be perfect. I'm looking forward to reading all of your comments down below. And I will be going from my least favorite, obviously, to my most favorite, just so you guys are aware. Also, just one more thing before I get into the video, I just want to let you guys know that there may be minor Disney story spoilers within this video. I have to at least mention some general things when it comes to talking about the Disney worlds just to basically explain as to why I liked it or did not like it as much as the others. So now with all that out of the way, let's just jump right into the video. So coming in at number 8, my least favorite Disney World out of the bunch is the 100 Acre Wood. Now I am going to be comparing all these worlds collectively and I do know that 100 Acre Wood is sort of in a league of its own but it is still considered a Disney World so I do have to include it on this list somewhere. Now don't get me wrong, I love the 100 Acre Wood as much as everybody else. I love visiting it in Kingdom Hearts 1 and I love visiting it in Kingdom Hearts 2. However, in Kingdom Hearts 3, there was just sort of something missing. In past games, there's a lot to do. There's a lot of different mini games, and there's a lot of variety within those mini games. However, with Kingdom Hearts 3, this one felt a little rushed and forced, in my opinion. I mean, I really do think that the 100 Acre Wood looks amazing, and I do love what they did with the environment and the characters, etc., etc. But the world overall, the music is sort of just the same. They didn't really do a whole lot. And the mini games are basically the same. All three of the mini games are just subbing out fruit with flowers, with vegetables. Overall, the game is the same. You just play it three different times with different things. Now, this was only the first visit, so I'm going to be considering just based off of what we did the first time that we visited the world. And for me, there just really wasn't enough for me to even want to go back. It didn't make me want to keep going. To be fair, I really did want this world to end, honestly. I was like, okay, I don't want to play this game for a third time. It's getting a little boring. And I really am upset that I am sort of dumping on 100 Acre Wood. But I do have to because it is at the bottom of my list in terms of Disney Worlds for Kingdom Hearts 3. So coming in at number 7 is Arendelle from Frozen. Now this is something that I didn't really know what to expect. I went into Frozen as open minded as I can be. Um, just from the get go with Kingdom Hearts 3, I think it was very apparent that Frozen was going to be in the game. So I was just kind of like, okay Frozen, Frozen's going to be cool, Frozen's whatever, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be. However, there really wasn't a lot in the world itself that really separated itself from any of the other ones. No, don't get me wrong, Frozen has an amazing soundtrack and an amazing story. However, the world itself, it was just climbing up a mountain over and over. I mean, to be fair, there really wasn't a whole lot that was very different. I mean, of course there was the labyrinth, and of course we did get to visit the end area where, you know, there's the village and the frozen lake and all that stuff. That was very cool, but I would say for a fair 90% of the world, it was sort of just climbing up a mountain. And honestly, it got a little boring, and I did really want the world to end towards the end. Now, I did still have fun with the world, I thought the fights and the music and everything was great, but it really just didn't stand out for me and I'm very disappointed because I thought that Frozen would just have a little bit more to offer when it comes to the world in Kingdom Hearts 3. So coming in at number 6, I have Olympus on my list. Now, look, I understand they made a huge, huge, huge upgrade 
from Kingdom Hearts in the past. Olympus has been one of the most present worlds in Kingdom Hearts history, and I always do love going to see Hercules and everything. However, I feel like there wasn't really much of a plot. I mean, it was more so just Sora trying to find Herc and, you know, to become strong again, and it didn't really follow the Disney criteria that all the other worlds did. The exploration was one of my favorite things about Olympus. I absolutely adored that we can go to Thebes and then climb Mount Olympus and then actually just be in the heavens and it was just a really awesome experience overall. However, it's just sort of this thing where I just felt like I was in Olympus again. You know what I mean? Even though they changed it so much, I just I felt like we were just in Olympus again. And something that, again, just really, really does hurt Olympus is that it didn't really follow the movie or it didn't really follow a specific, you know, we're playing along with the movie type of thing. I just, it felt like we were just sort of trying to get Sora strong again. And that's not a bad thing. I mean, that was really just the whole point of going to Olympus in the first place. But every other world sort of felt like we were there for just for the ride, you know what I mean? We were there being a part of the movie. We were there being a part of the story. And for Olympus, I just felt this weird thing where I was just like, okay, Olympus, great, we're here again, you know, the music sounds great, it looks great, but there really wasn't much other than the fact that the world has expanded so much from previous games that really stood out to me as a whole. Okay, so this is where making the list sort of got a little tough. Coming in at number five, although I don't want to say it, Toy Box comes in at number five. I'm not entirely sure why, but when I was playing Toy Story, I sort of wasn't blown away. And I think that's really just because they showed so much of Toy Story at one point. I mean, with the Kingdom Hearts 3 premiere event that happened in the springtime, we saw so much footage, and pretty much in every single trailer, we saw a lot of Toy Story footage. There really were only a few things that were kept a secret, and I was like, oh, that was really cool, that was really awesome. And yeah, of course the Gigas were obviously my favorite part of the entire world. And it really does disappoint me that Toy Story is one of my my favorite Disney Pixar movies of all time and I was really really excited for this reveal but I just feel like they kind of ruined it by showing us so much there was really not that much room to surprise us and to really give me something new so it is unfortunate but Toy Story is not that high on my list so coming in at number four we have Monstropolis which honestly was one of the worlds that I wasn't really sure how to feel about Obviously, I was excited, but when I say I wasn't sure how to feel about it, I mean, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I was aware that we were going to be exploring a completely different story when it comes to Monsters, Inc., and that was really, really awesome. I loved not knowing where it was really going, and it really did feel like we were a part of the story. I just love the interactions between Mike and Sully with Sora, Donald, and Goofy. I thought it was awesome. I loved the outfits when it comes to Sora, Donald, and Goofy when they have to blend in with the world. I thought everything was just overall great. And, you know, obviously, Vanitas was in it. So, of course, I was hyped about that. That was really cool. And there was a lot of awesome things that happened. I thought Randall was very interesting. And just overall, we saw a whole side of Monsters, Inc. that we've never seen before. We got to explore the entire factory. Aside from just the doors and all that stuff, we got to see so much more of the plant and how the entire world of Monstropolis really does look. I'm sort of torn between putting Monsters, Inc. and Toy Story here. Uh, I went back and forth for quite a bit when I was making this list, but Monstropolis did come out on top more so because there was more new content for me to explore, and there was a lot more that really I was like, wow, that was really cool. Wow, I wasn't expecting that. So it had more of that shock value than Toy Story did. Okay, so coming in at number three, which was my surprise, was actually the Kingdom of Corona, which is Tangled. Now, I think me not ever seeing Tangled sort of has something to do with this opinion, but really what it was is, I had not, I, I mean, I have a very brief understanding of what Tangled actually is. Of course, I know the story of Rapunzel and all that stuff, but when it comes to Tangled, the movie, I didn't know a whole lot about it. So I was going into it practically completely blind. So figuring out the story and just sort of watching how it all unfolded, plus Marluxia being there, just I, everything just worked really well with me. I loved the forest area, and I loved just the, the whole thing together in general. It all just blended beautifully. The music is absolutely fantastic. The visuals are outstanding, and I really do love all the Heartless. Um, the boss fight at the end was really, really cool and really unique. It actually reminded me of Dream Dot Distance in a way, where the boss is really big and it jumps around and stuff. I thought that was really awesome. So Tangled was really weird for me. I left that world very, very satisfied, and I truly, truly enjoyed the Tangled world overall. So coming in at number two, just short of number one, is San Francisco, the Big Hero 6 world. 
Now, if you guys have watched my videos in the past, you will be aware that Big Hero 6 is one of my favorite Disney movies of all time. I absolutely adore the movie, I adore the characters, and I just love Baymax so much. The world of San Francisco being combined with two cities, Tokyo and San Francisco, is a really, really interesting concept to me, and I just loved it overall. The idea of a city environment to me was so cool, it actually reminded me sort of like Spider-Man, how we're just flying around the city and exploring building tops and just, you know, just interacting with people and everything was just so cool to me. And the fact that it was sort of a mission-based world, how we always ended up back at Hero's Garage and then we got to go out and do more things like destroying Heartless and just, you know, interacting with Riku and stuff, that was just a really, really cool thing. And obviously the soundtrack was dope. I loved the music in Big Hero 6 so, so much. And also just the fact that there's a day and night. You can actually pick if you want to go there during the day or at night. That's just a little touch to me where it was just super, super cool. And I truly enjoyed it. I do wish that Big Hero 6 just had a tiny bit more content to it. I don't know if it felt like I was rushing through it or I was just enjoying it too much or something like that, but I feel like it just didn't have as much playtime as the other worlds did, so that is really the only negative thing about it. Plus, I do wish that we could sort of open the map just to see where we are because it's a giant open space, and I don't know, I just kind of got lost a lot of the time, but aside from all that, the music... Um, the visuals, just overall the environment in general, just being in a city and stuff, won me over, but it is just a little bit short of the number one spot. Okay, so it is time. For me personally, this world was something that I was super, super excited for, but a lot of people underestimated, I'm seeing a lot of positive feedback online. The Caribbean from Pirates of the Caribbean is my number one favorite world in Kingdom Hearts 3. I don't even know where to begin with this world. First of all, we got to explore in Kingdom Hearts 2, which eh, could have been done better, obviously, but they stepped up their game with the Caribbean for Kingdom Hearts 3. It is so much more lively. There's so much more color. There's so much more to do. Rather than just going back and forth on a ship and, you know, just beating Heartless and following Luxord around, there, there's a whole town, there's NPCs, you can explore the ocean on your ship, you can swim underwater, and let's not even, don't even talk to me about the music. The music was the best in the entire game in my opinion. Pirates of the Caribbean had the best music and I was just, I was drooling at the mouth pretty much the entire time. And this is actually the only Disney World where we got to fight the villain from the movie. Like, we fought Davy Jones. That was so cool to me. I absolutely loved it. So, yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean from top to bottom was... I can't even think of anything bad about it. I mean, obviously swimming underwater and stuff. Eh, nobody really likes that. But anyways, you know, it was just so cool overall. I loved seeing what they were truly able to do with just a simple engine switch. And Pirates of the Caribbean was truly brought to life. And it has to be one of my favorite worlds in the entire series overall. However, guys, that is the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Like I said at the beginning, please let me know down below what your number one favorite world was and what your least favorite was. I'm really interested to see what you guys have to say, and I can't wait to see what you all have to say. So, yeah, don't forget to do that. Like the video. Most importantly, subscribe to my channel for more Kingdom Hearts 3 content. I'm going to be going absolutely in with content, and I really want you guys to hear what I have to say. And hopefully you're interested and you're enjoying what I've done so far. So, yeah, thank you guys again for watching, and uh, I will catch you later. Bye-bye.